Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hi everybody, Michael here with Erica. And today we are going to be talking about Super Mario World. Super Mario World was one of the first things to come out for the Super Nintendo. Uh, it came out in Japan in 1990. Let's start by going through the normal six large categories that we always do for these video game reviews, starting with story. I removed a lot of the, the subcategories that have to do with JRPG specifically because in platformers like Mario, the story isn't quite as important. The story doesn't really stand out to me very much. And I do appreciate the use of Yoshi and making him important to the storyline, but I wouldn't say that it's something that jumps out to me in terms of narrative. But also, this is a platformer, and how much does the narrative really matter? Right. Okay, now down to characters. The only important new character that we have is Yoshi, but talking about characters here is a little bit interesting because it is sort of separate from design and gameplay, but the design and the gameplay are way more important than characters in a platformer. The villains were really fun in this one, and because they were graphically prettier, you could see more about them and see more of their personalities coming mm -hmm. out. Let's specifically talk about our new friend, Yoshi. This was the funnest element of this particular game in the franchise, uh, just being able to see and bounce around on Yoshi for the first time. And we didn't see much personality from him, but he was an active, integral part of the gameplay, and that was, that was just fun. It added a new element to this game that we hadn't seen in previous ones. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree with that. Yoshi had actually been planned as far back as the very first Mario game, but they couldn't really figure out a way to graphically do it, and they were just basically ran out of space on the cartridge to put anything else in there. Yeah, I can't really picture Yoshi on Mario 1 or even 2. It would have altered gameplay. The maps for each stage would have had to look completely different if Yoshi were included. I really love Yoshi. When there are Nintendo characters to choose from for another game, like a Mario Kart or a Smash Brothers or something like that. If I don't have any other reason to pick a different character, like for specific gameplay reasons or something like that, I'm gonna often pick Yoshi first. He is just one of my all-time favorite Nintendo characters. And you're one of many people I know who say that. They're very committed to, to Yoshi and how cool he is and how different he is. And he's just so cute, too. <laughs> he is. And he's powerful. He's strong. Yeah. Video games in general at this time, we are in 1990 at this point, but especially platformers where there are only one to maybe four characters that you can choose from. Diversity, and I mean specifically like ethnic, cultural, racial diversity. How do you feel about that in this game? We've talked about this before, how there just wasn't enough diversity here. You see a lot of European features in some of these characters in their basic design, but you know, there isn't a good spread of diversity and that's, that's coming. And in retrospect, we can start to see little tiny steps, but it wasn't here in this game. But how much of that is a problem? So if you're giving this a score out of five, I find it really tricky because it's par for the course, but the course should be better. It still isn't all the way there. Now, specifically gender diversity. And I want to make a point that I have, in all of the games that I've been playing, I'm just about to get to 1994. I have not yet seen a gendered character that was anything other than binary. And, I, and that's still the case for this game. And that's another thing that only in the past five years we've started to see some gender diversity beyond the binary in video games. In this particular Mario game, you've got two playable characters. And they are Mario and Luigi, and they are both male characters. But then we sort of get into that question again, is how much of that is a problem comparing it against other things that are existing around the same time? Similar to what I said about diversity, honestly, there's it's, it's hard to kind of take a time machine in and shake people a little bit. But on the other hand, the graphics and the technology itself sort of lends itself to that. You know, the, how much detail can you really get in just a visual from a non-speaking character? It would be interesting to see a comparison of, of more inclusivity with gender, race, ethnicity, all that against the the events of better technologies because you would think that as technology grew, representation has grown. And to a point that's been true, but maybe not fast enough, I'd be interested to see that comparison. Okay, now let's talk about graphics. They're very nice. They're much more detailed than previous games, and it's a lot of fun to watch the way they move within the different backgrounds that they have, so it's it, you can see more contrast between the moving icons and the backgrounds. So 
that's very interesting. They're definitely taking advantage of everything the, the most recent technological advances can use and the newest systems they can use. Even comparing it against the games that are coming up for the Super Nintendo at the very end of its life cycle, Mario holds up and it looks really good. And it's just a really pretty looking game, I think. Design. Do you think this game, this game's visual design is interesting and original? Yeah, it's very original. It's fresh. It's uh, it's unexpected. I can see somebody who had been playing all the previous games coming to this one and being like, "Ooh, shiny new toy!" Mm -hmm. It's very, very interesting and, and different—a different take than any of the other Mario games before it. What do you think of how Mario and Luigi look in this game? So I'm going to cut in and answer that question myself first, because I wanted to say that when I just in my head picture Mario, I think of. Super Mario World Mario. That's the one that comes to my mind first. It's partially because I had this when I was right about five, six, seven, so it like imprinted on me. But yeah, this is the first Mario that I think of in design with the, the slightly better designs than in the previous game. You get to see more Princess Toadstool. We have not beaten this game playing together, so I want to pull up this specific sprite. Wow. It's not my favorite. Definitely not. <laughs> Props to whoever made her lipstick match her dress. <laughs> it's just uneven. Her earrings are bigger than her nose. And, you know, we couldn't necessarily see all of this detail on a 1990s TV. But, you know, I feel like a little more effort could have been made. And you you only do see her for a few moments after you defeat Bowser. But, yeah, she's not the best looking sprite. See, that's just way cooler. Yeah. I like, think. he just looks amazing. He looks awesome, you, and you can see his teeth there. They, they're shiny and bright, and the horns. It's just, it's it's like it's not even the same game. Yeah, I think he looks great. This is the first time we've seen Yoshi, so we don't have anything to visually compare him against. But what do you think of his design? I'm still pretty rudimentary, and uh, I wish he had legs, or, or more legs in this first one. He's kind of squatting. But yeah, he looks... Tons better than, than Princess Peach. I'm a little offended now. <laughs> then the design of the levels. All the levels in most of the games have been excellent for what they have done, and this one just kind of continues that trajectory. Yeah. Then we've got the various monsters. What do you think about them in this game? They're fun. Yeah. They're cool looking. There's more variety this time. And I did like seeing, especially in the bosses and some of the harder villains, you know, it was more than just different colors of Birdo. You know, they were very varied. Yeah. All right, sound. Let's talk specifically about music first. Uh, what do you think of the composition of this game? This is uh, Koji Kondo, back from all of the other Mario games. Mm -hmm. But it was a different, well, maybe not different, but it's sort of an involved style for him. There was a lot more variety just to the music in general and the mood he was trying to create. It wasn't just, it didn't feel like just a song on a loop. It felt more like atmosphere. Yeah. And I think it's extra interesting that he's able to do that because this game doesn't really have a whole lot of different melodies to it. This game kind of has a mono theme. It's that same is the music from almost every level. And it's just like changed slightly. So like when it's an underwater level, it's in six instead. So we've got ba 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 and so on. Kondo did a really excellent job making this mono theme sound really good throughout the game. What about the instrument quality? I can talk about this one first because I've been thinking about it a lot. I like that this game doesn't really try to go for realistic sounding instruments. And usually when a synth instrument quality sounds bad, it's when it's trying to sound like something acoustic and doing it poorly. The instruments for this game are all pretty cartoony and they sound like they are intending to be this sound. We chose this not because it almost sounds like a violin section. We chose this because this is the sound we wanted. It's just a different style of instrument. The sound cards on these cartridges had, or in the TVs had, had a very limited range and instead of working against that to make it sound realistic they did what they could with it and that's one advantage that the Mario games have always had over some other video games that have really tried to oh we're gonna make a full orchestral sound here. What about the sound effects? Oh the sound effects were, were brighter and more varied you know it just it just like everything else in this game kind of grew from what it had been before and still fit within this world. And my favorite sound effect in like almost all of video games is in this when you any of the bosses 
when you heard a boss, and I go, wow. All right, now we've got to gameplay. Oh, that was that was really good. All of their usage and their movements, there's a really good, firm feeling of control over these characters as you play. I really like how Mario and Luigi control in this game. I feel like their jump is just the right height, and their speed is just right. Like, you can really, like, get to going really fast and not really see where you're going, but that's always kind of, well, at least in Mario 3, that was also the case. And it's kind of exhilarating. Um, that's that's how I like to play Mario. <laughs> Maybe it's sentimental, but I don't know if I like the power-up attachments as much on this one. And the graphics are a small part of that, but I I really really liked you know having a tail in the third one and knowing that I could fly. But as long as long as Mario is able to fly some way or another, I guess it doesn't matter if it's a tail or a cape. The only real difference between the tail and the cape is the gliding you can do with the cape. Once you're up, you can puff out your cape and then just sort of like scoop and glide, and then you can do like the ground pound attack. And it's a nice addition. I guess for me, it's more of a visual preference than functionality, because clearly Mario can get the job done. Minigames are usually only a huge problem in JRPGs when you have to do this thing that you're just, this is the only time you have to do this, you have to push a button really fast or something like that. There's not a whole lot of this happening in many platformers, although the minigames in other platformers do start to pop up more, especially in like the N64 era. In Super Mario World, we've, the, the ones that I could think of, there may be more that I'm just missing, are those pipes that have you play that tic-tac-toe game where you're hitting the three blocks that you're trying to get, or the bonus game when you get your score from the end of each level up to 100. Yeah, you know, until you said it, I was like, wait, are there mini games in this one? And that's, you know, both good and bad, because you could say that it's just like that tic-tac-toe thing. It's just really well integrated. You kind of forget that it's there or that it's different. I didn't find them interesting enough. You don't need to succeed at these mini games to beat the game. If you're bad at it, it doesn't matter. And we've got the camera, and the camera isn't normally a huge problem in side-scrolling 2D games. That being said, there are still times that can be a problem, like I find it's occasionally a problem in some Sonic games when you're moving so fast and you can't see far enough ahead of you to know, oh, there's something coming, I need to jump. I'd say the camera stays right with him the whole time. And then we've got the learning curve in the game. This is where difficulty comes in. As someone who grew up with the first four Mario games, I'm not counting the Game Boy one because I didn't have one at the time. I do think it's the easiest of them. Do you think this game like teaches you everything you need to know how to do too quickly or too slowly or anything like that? See, I don't think it really does at all, and that's kind of my issue, but none of the Mario games have. Mm -hmm. And it's like you said, my instincts are very finely tuned in the first three because I played them so often. I never even had a Super Nintendo of my own, so I, and I never played this game until I was playing it with you. So it's, it's a different sort of learning curve at, at a woman of a certain age rather than, you know, the, the 10, 11, 12 year old who was playing these nonstop. So it's, it's hard for me to say that the learning curve is easier or harder. I know that for me at this time, it was a little harder to get used to this one, but I think it's for all the same reasons that the others might have been too. Mm -hmm. I like the games that give you a little bit of hand-holding at the beginning, or like an introductory level, mm -hmm. to get started and really learn all the stuff. Because once you bounce around a little, you figure out what you have to do. And this one, it's more like you're crashing in. We each gave this game 95 out of 100. Do you want to move that around at all? No, I'm good with that. Okay. So, with that, the, the game score that our tallies brought us to is a 94%. Averaged with our two 95s, that gives this game a 94.5 or a 95%. So this game is a solid A. Any final thoughts on anything? Just that I've had a lot of fun playing it and learning another Mario game that I didn't already know. Then that's it for this video. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have anything to say, please do say it in the comments below. I enjoy reading them and responding to your comments, but also it helps in increase engagement in the video, which helps this video get seen by other people. If you're not following this channel already, give this channel a follow. You might like other things that we talk about, because we also talk about music and movies and TV and stuff. Mostly video games and music, though. I think that's about it. So maintain your groovy selves, everybody. See you next time.